prisons are made for those who commit crimes to be punished. But after watching this video you will say that this prison is made to commit crimes with criminals. This is the tale of one of the cruelest and worst prison camps in the entire world, Devil's Island. Devil's Island looks like a paradise at first look. Its beauty conceals a terrible truth. For nearly 100 years, tens of thousands of prisoners died on its shores while living in a French penal colony. The area is sprinkled with palm trees and surrounded by lovely waves. French prisoners were kept on Devil's Island, which is actually made up of three islands off the coast of French Guiana and a small portion of Cayenne, from 1852 to 1953. They committed murder as well as offenses against Napoleon III, but some, such as the French soldier Alfred Dreyfus, had made no effort. They all nevertheless suffered the same. The men on Devil's Island suffered from various illnesses, hunger, and abuse from the guards. Few people ever went back to France. Devil's Island was considered a literal place of salvation before its conversion to a prison camp. French colonists suffering yellow fever in the 1760s sought refuge on the trio of islands located eight miles offshore of French Guiana. They gave them the names Alt du Diable because of the shark-infested waters, Al Royale in honor of their king, and Al Saint Joseph. The tiny archipelago known as Isles du Salat was given the name Salvation Islands, but a hundred years later, the Isles du Salat was chosen by the French Emperor Napoleon III to fulfill a different function as a prison. With Devil's Island, Napoleon III aimed to address several issues. He first tried to remove anyone who had disagreed with his December 1850. 51 coup d'etat. Days after taking power, he transferred prisoners to Devil's Island, including 239 Republicans who had resisted his takeover. Napoleon III didn't just send prisoners to Devil's Island out of spite. The French government also benefited from the convict colony in many other ways. In the first step, it would remove dangerous criminals from the country. Second, the prisoners could help in boosting French Guiana's slow colonization. Finally, they replaced the colony's enslaved population, which France had released in 1848, by offering cheap labor. The penal colony of Devil's Island in French Guiana was soon to be reached by ships full of prisoners. Prisoners had to make it to Devil's Island first and survive. The men were kept together in cages and frequently got into fights that resulted in one or more deaths. Also, ship officials punished anyone who disobeyed orders by using steam and sulfur. When they arrived, prisoners first moved to Estiloron du Moroni, a city on the Moroni River in French Guiana. There, they were separated into various groups and taken to different prisons. To work as loggers, some went to St. Laurent's Camp de la Transportation. The Isles du Salat were handed worst prisoners, but few prisoners survived well, regardless of where they were sent. Only 40% of them made it through their first year. As a result of numerous illnesses and a lack of food, they were removed one by one. As if that weren't bad enough, the guards who looked after the prisoners were also cruel to them. They were kept in small, dark cells and were not allowed to talk, smoke, read, or even sit before sunset. Guards moved along a grid-like ceiling so they could watch the cells from above. To avoid being heard by the prisoners, they were wearing slippers. Due to the penal colony's high mortality rate, it was quickly known as the dry guillotine. But in case somebody acted out, Devil's Island also contained a real guillotine. However, even if someone did survive the crossing and the conditions on Devil's Island, they most likely never returned to France. After completing their punishment, prisoners were prohibited from leaving French Guiana under the double policy. Instead, they had to remain for a while equivalent to their initial sentence and anyone with a sentence of more than eight years was imprisoned for life. In 1894, the French government convicted Dreyfus, a young military officer, of treason. In a public ceremony, Dreyfus's fellow officers ripped the medals from his chest, broke his sword, and marched him around, jeering, death to Judas, death to the Jew. Dreyfus protested his innocence. He had been charged with giving military secrets to the Germans, but his handwriting didn't even match the evidence presented in court. Indeed, at a time when French national loyalty still hinged on being Catholic, Dreyfus had been convicted based on being Jewish more than anything else. The government condemned Dreyfus to a life sentence on Devil's Island. For four long years, Dreyfus endured a torturous existence on Devil's Island. Living in an isolated cabin on the Isle du Diable, Dreyfus was shackled to his bed, fed rancid pork, and forbidden from speaking with other prisoners. But back in France, the tide had begun to turn in his favor. In an open letter entitled Jacques, French author Emile Zola accused the French government of framing Dreyfus in a massive cover-up, and, eventually, the French government relented. They offered Dreyfus a pardon in 1899. He accepted even though it meant an acknowledgement of guilt. The government of the Republic has given me back my freedom, Dreyfus said. It is nothing for me without my honor. However, the French government fully exonerated Dreyfus in 1906. Henri Charrière, another of Devil Island's most famous prisoners, did so in a very different manner. In 1931, Cherrier, a former criminal from Paris, was sent to Devil's Island. Cherrier was found guilty of killing a pimp despite maintaining his innocence and was given a life sentence. But as soon as Cherrier reached there, he started to make plans for his escape. 
He started trying to get out of prison for the first time after spending three years, Cherrier somehow escaped the island. However, the French authorities immediately located him. He was given a two-year solitary prison term, Cherrier continued to attempt to escape seven more times. While other people may have given up, Cherrier didn't. On his eighth try, he was successful in escaping by constructing a boat out of coconuts. Cherrier made his way to Venezuela through shark-infested seas. He made a home there, started a family, and used his gangster identity, Papillion, to write an incendiary book about his time spent on Devil's Island. Horror stories have made their way across the ocean. Although the French government had officially stopped doing so in 1938, World War II prevented the island from being completely closed off, and some additional prisoners continued to arrive there until 1946. The last prisoners who were still being kept in Devil's Island didn't finally leave until 1953. 80,000 men have been taken prisoner on Devil's Island over its 100 years of history. There, tens of thousands of people died 75%, maybe. When prison staff threw their bodies into the ocean, a bell rang, causing the sharks to gather and feast. Prison remains may be found in the jungle on Isle Royale, Al St. Joseph, and Al Dudayable. This area of paradise formerly contained genuine horrors. If you like the video then please tell us your views in the comment section and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching.